60,000 years ago, people jumped onto rafts to travel to the Philippines, not knowing if there is any land where they're heading to. That is the biggest leap of faith ever. Hmm. It is time for a little bit of history on What's, What's up, up Philippines? Philippines? What is up guys? Welcome to another reaction channel video on our <laughs> channel. <laughs> My name is Mike. And I'm Nelly. We are two travel, food and lifestyle vloggers based here in Manila in the Philippines, bringing you some good travel, food and lifestyle vibes. God, I'm so bad at this lately. Yeah. But here on What's Up Philippines, we um, react to videos that you send us, you recommend to us. And Nelly, what are we reacting to today? So today we are reacting to... The history, the history of, of the Philippines, Philippines in 12 minutes. minutes. Good, Good job. teamwork. <laughs> All right, um, before we jump into this video, guys, mm -hmm. uh, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> do, us, do us a solid one and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy watching our videos here. I yes. see like only 40% of the people actually watching these videos are subscribed to our channel. So hitting that subscribe button will support us a ton. And right now, we are mm -hmm. super, super motivated to bring more of this content for you guys to watch and enjoy yes. during the quarantine here in the Philippines. And for us, it is a awesome way to pass our time. Yes, in, it's fun for us, fun for you. Let's stay we inside, <laughs> stay inside, film videos, stay watch safe. videos, stay safe. Yes. And yeah, let's go and let's watch this video. Okay. I don't think that's enough plug, right? Mm. <laughs> this, this looks... Are you skew? Yeah, it's skew. Okay. No, it's fine. Just I'll lean like this. <laughs> okay, let me... Should I check? Nah, it's fine. Okay. And... Sorry if I skew. And... Go! God, we were the most unprofessional reaction <laughs> on the internet. Today, the Philippines started with the arrival of its first humans. It is believed they used rafts or boats around 60,000 years ago. Wow. with groups of diverse people settling in the archipelago. Mm. Some of these groups started to develop and expand into bigger settlements, and in the next thousands of Dramatic. years, they evolved yeah. into what some scholars believe to be considered early states. Austronesians wow. and afterwards speakers of the Malayo-Polynesian languages began to arrive in successive waves beginning about 4000 BC. According to the existing evidence, a jade culture existed on these lands, starting... What? I gotta pause right away. What? 60,000 years ago, people jumped onto rafts to travel to the Philippines, not knowing if there is any land where they're heading to. I mean, you can't see it if you jump on a, on a, on a raft. Yeah. I mean, that is the biggest leap of faith ever. Yeah, very true with the Neolithic era. By 1000 BC, it is believed that the inhabitants of the archipelago had developed into four distinct kinds of people. Okay, tribal hello, groups, hello. warrior <laughs> societies, the petty plutocracy, and the harbor civilizations. Wow. Mm -hmm. Also important to note is the fact that the metallurgy reached the archipelago due to trade with India. Around 300 to 700 AD, the seafaring people of the islands began to trade with the Indianized kingdoms in the Malay archipelago and the nearby East Asian principalities, adopting influences from both Buddhism and Hinduism. Hmm. Some cultures of present-day Vietnam showed evidence of an extensive trade network. Artifacts and goods were traded, such as glass, agate, or gold. There were also other items present in the region which were most likely <coughs> imported, including ear ornaments that have been found in archaeological sites in the Philippines, Thailand, and Taiwan. The Indian culture influenced the Southeast Asian region starting with the first century. During the period of the South Indian Pallava dynasty and the North Indian Gupta Empire, Indian culture spread to no Southeast Asia and did reach the Philippines, as well. which yeah. led to the establishment of I new mean, kingdoms largely was, uh, influenced by the Indian... I know that India was a big trade... Uh, Mughal. Mughal back then, but I had no idea that they also did trading with the Philippines culture and traditions. The date inscribed in the oldest Philippine document found so far, the Laguna Copperplate inscription, is 900 AD. 
From the details of the document, written in Kawi script, the bearer of a debt, Nam Warren, along with his children, is cleared of a debt by the ruler of Tondo. This is the earliest document that shows the use of mathematics in pre-colonial Philippine societies. A standard system of weights and measures is also demonstrated by the use of precise measurement for gold and other items, as well as in astronomy. From the various Sanskrit terms and titles seen in the document, the culture and society of the Manila Bay were that of Hindu Old Malay amalgamation, similar to the cultures of Java, Peninsular no Malaysia, and I Sumatra knew. at the no time. Idea. In the years leading up to 1000, there were already several maritime societies existing in the islands, but there was no unifying political state encompassing the entire Philippine archipelago. Instead, the region was divided into numerous semi-autonomous city-states under the rule of the plutocracy, while a number of states existed plutocracy. alongside the highland hmm. societies. These smaller structures alternated between being part of or being influenced by larger Asian empires like Maya Pahit. Hmm. Around 1225... Okay. I'm quite aware of the European history, but... Um, Please tell us the European history in five minutes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's something that we learned at school. Okay. It's not a test here. <laughs> what year? No. What year? <laughs> was the Habsburg Empire formed? Uh, 1400. I have no idea. <laughs> of Mai, a Buddhist pre-Hispanic Philippine island state centered in Mondoro, flourished, attracting Mai traders. I think Oster Ritchie, which was the previous name of Austria and the Habsburg Empire, was 982. Okay, just googling some facts quickly. Me thinks, me thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was right. From 1440. You're only 40 years wrong. Good, mm, good. Look, look up Osterici. No, not, this is not about Austria. <laughs> and shipping from the kingdom of Ryukyu I just wanted to, be to right. the empire of Japan. Chao Jakua, a customs inspector in Fukian province, China, wrote the description of the barbarous peoples, describing trade with this pre-colonial state. Its people were noted for their honesty in trade. Wow. Much of what is now Indonesia was ruled by the Hindu Maya Pahit Empire. During the 1300s, this empire ruled over Luzon Island and the Sulu Archipelago. <laughs> As more and more influence was on these islands, skirmishes and battles also existed. Some local tribes were waging incessant guerrilla warfare against them. Eventually, the kingdoms of Luzon regained independence from Maya Pahit after the Battle of Manila, 1365. Sulu also re-established independence, hmm. and in vengeance, assaulted the Mayapahit province of Brunei before that a fleet explains. from the capital Hello. drove them out. The start of the Islamic era in Indonesia set the collapse of the Mayapahits as its provinces eventually seceded and became independent sultanates. In 1380, Makdum Karim, an Arab trader born in Johor, arrived in Sulu from Malacca. And that's why and Mindoro is Islam Muslim to the maybe. Philippines. I guess, Additionally, uh, Mindoro. Sharif ul Hashim, an no? Arab Muslim explorer, no. established the Sultanate of Sulu. But, uh, like this part, this part. Yeah, yeah, but no, Mindanao is not mainly Muslim. Okay, my it's, bad. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's southern, southern Mindanao. South, southwest Mindanao. Yeah. I think there's like a. By converting its previous ruler, the Hindu king Raja Baguinda, to Islam and then marrying his daughter. The Sultanate of Magindanao rose to prominence at the end of the 15th century. Meanwhile, the religion was introduced to the area by Muslim missionaries and traders from the Middle East, Indian, and Malay regions who propagated Islam to Sulu and Magindanao. As before, when Buddhist and Hindu cultures influenced the archipelago, the same case happened with the Muslim culture. Upon the secession of Brunei from the Maya Pahit Empire, they imported the Arab emir from Mecca, Sheriff Ali, and became an independent sultanate. The new religion. Okay. Just one thing. This video is mainly made by 
animations with the Philippines map, which is quite like uh, how do you say it? simple, but also very difficult to put it all together. I yeah. find it very very interesting. Yeah started to grow roots in the Philippines through conquest and conversion of local leaders in the next decades. Moreover, Islam was further strengthened by the arrival to the Philippines of traders and proselytizers from Malaysia and Indonesia. And he sounds like somebody from National Geographic. Yeah. In 1521, like to hear the Spanish the reached Jesus the archipelago here. through the expedition around the world, led by Portuguese-born Spanish explorer Ferdinand Magellan. Claiming the islands he saw for the Spanish Empire, he established friendly relations with some of the local... This is ours now. <laughs> I claim this mine. <laughs> Some of them to Roman Catholicism. Like because the, the Philippines are a large archipelago, the Spaniards started to explore many islands. However, the explorer Ferdinand Magellan was killed during the Battle of Mactan <gasps> against the local ruler Lapu Lapu. Over the next several decades, other Spanish expeditions were dispatched to the islands. In 1543, an expedition was led to the islands, naming them Philippines, in honor of Philip of Austria, who became Philip II of Spain on January 16th, 1556. Austria? Austria? We are Austrians, Hang so on. we have no idea. Philip of Austria. Can it be? No. I don't think. Need to look that up, and it's so funny maybe, because maybe we were talking about Austrian history. It was, it was about ha the Habsburg, it the Habsburg Empire. Empire and how they used to. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Name was then extended to the entire archipelago later on in the Spanish era. European colonization began in earnest when Spanish explorer Miguel Lopez de Legazpi arrived from Mexico in 1565 and formed the first European settlements in Cebu. Through diplomatic and military annexation of some lands, incorporating local states including the Kingdom of Tondo, the Spaniards established Manila as the capital of the Spanish East Indies. In 1578, the Castilian War erupted between the Christian Spaniards and Muslim Bruneans over control of the Philippine archipelago. The Christian troops were so diverse due to generally being made up of people under the Spanish rule, including Native Americans, namely Aztecs, Mayans, and Incans, who were gathered and sent from Mexico and wow. South America to be led by Spanish officers that had worked together with native Filipinos in military campaigns across Southeast Asia. The Muslim side was also very diverse, though. They were supported by the Ottoman Empire, with mm. their troops consisting of Malay warriors and expeditionary forces sent by the Ottomans, which included mainly Turks, Egyptians, Swahilis, Somalis, Indians, and others. The conflict ended with a status quo antebellum. Just 20 years after the conquest of Luzon, remarkable progress existed in the work of colonization of the islands and the spread of Christianity. A cathedral was built in the city of Manila with an Episcopal palace. Other monastery and churches were built across islands, and more and more people started to convert to Christianity. Furthermore, Spanish and Mexican families settled in the new lands, creating stronger communities. Much of the archipelago came under Spanish rule, creating the first unified political structure known as the Philippines. Spanish colonial rule saw the introduction of Christianity, the code of law, and the oldest modern university in Asia. The f okay. It's... it's I, I just I, I I want to say something, but also at the same time I want to follow what they are saying to get the context. So bear with us. <laughs> what? Oh, that's it. That's, that's it. Okay. That's all. Cool. That's it. <laughs> Philippines was ruled by the Mexico-based vice royalty of New Spain, and after. The colony was directly governed by Spain. Many of the local people revolted in the next centuries due to some abuses made by the Spanish authorities. Their rule ended after the American-Spanish War at the end of the 19th century in 1898. The Philippines became a territory of the United States. The United States then established the... Oh, that early already? 1898? Mm. Wow, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that. 
insular governments to rule the Philippines. In 1907, the elected assembly was set up with popular elections. The U.S. promised independence in the Jones Act to the country, and the Philippine Commonwealth was established in 1935 as a 10-year interim step period to full independence. But before gaining total freedom in 1942 during yeah. World War II, the Philippines was occupied by Japanese forces. So by 1945, the U.S. liberated the Philippines, and the Treaty of Manila in 1946 established an independent Philippine Republic. The period of their independence was marked by internal skirmishes and a smaller period of dictatorship, but also huge progress and development, with Manuel Roxas becoming the first president of the Independent Republic of the Philippines. The United States seceded its sovereignty over the Philippines on July 4, 1946, as scheduled. However, the Philippine economy remained highly dependent on United States markets. Roxas died suddenly of a heart attack in April 1948, and the Vice President Elpidio Quirino ruled the country until 1953. Some communist partisans existed in the islands, but were defeated in the 50s. Additionally, an important event happened in the middle of the 1960s. Ferdinand Marcos took power in 1965 and ruled until 1986. Wow, so this long. era included the final years. years of the Third Republic from 1965 to 1972 and the Philippines under martial law, 1972 to 1981. His reign was marked by dictatorship and instability. In 1986, Ferdinand Marcos was removed from power and replaced by Maria Corazon Aquino. Up to the present day, five other presidents ruled the Philippines. Wow, interesting. Mm. Wow, well, such a great video. So many things that I have... Didn't yeah. know. Facts overload. Mine. Yeah. Balloon. <laughs> wow, that was a good summary. Very um, objective, I would say. Yeah. Was, I have to Google was... Philip the Austrian. Yeah. I need to know. Okay, so in any in any case, it's good for us to learn these things because we live here and. Um, it's the same thing when I moved to Austria. I, I grew up in Austria. We just, you know, want to know the history, the culture, everything around the Philippines. So yeah. it's good to keep ourselves educated and know the facts. Philip the Austrian, the Austrian. refers to two Habsburg kings. Mm. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, this was an awesome video. I yep. really loved it. If you guys have more of these videos, for us to watch maybe something specific about each individual region of the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, so like Luzon, Visayas and so on, Mindanao. Yeah. Let us know, because uh, I'd like to learn more about the history of this amazing country. Yeah. Uh, if you're new around here, be sure to hit that thumbs up, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time on What's, What's Up Philippines? Philippines. Bye bye.